hello everyone we are back from break um i don't know if any of you remember to reach out to arthur morgan sometime invite him back on the stream definitely definitely do that same thing with dutch vanderland of course um but no more time for red dead because we need to make time for shelly ingram who is here with us today on folkwise as our special guest welcome to the formal interview portion of the show thank you for being with us tonight uh Dom, before we get into the interview, I do believe that there is a minor task, but that is also a very major impact um, that we must address. <laughs> to do oh, something about. We, we love a return on investment. Yeah, everything <laughs> coming together exactly as we planned over here at Folkwise. And uh, by that, I mean we've got interview questions written. We're ready to, uh, to start asking our uh, fantastic guest some questions. However... Uh, I don't want uh, Shelly or the folks at home to think this is just me and Daisy uh, writing all the questions because we are the two people that you see on stream every week because we do have a team of uh, invaluable and intrepid and uh, uh, magnanimous folkwise interview salutes who help us uh, research the guests and write the questions every week. So, Shelly, uh, chat, as we call them, voting members of the Academy, if you... Uh, if you hear a question you like, don't thank us. Thank the sleuths. Yes. I thought for a second you were going to say enigmatic. Mm, but that I is also that it's also a word that applies to the sleuths. Thank you, sleuthing team. Um, chat, you, you know what you to do if that team, happens. Thank you, although you are an enigma. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Shelly, are you ready for your first question? I'm ready. I'm ready. Hell yeah. All right. Very fitting for this particular episode. Mm -hmm. How are folklorists the outlaws of academia? Mm -hmm. um we get to do cool shit and my <laughs> colleagues are always jealous they say that all the time they're like yeah. i'm jealous I'm like yeah well you should be right <laughs> yeah um i i mean honestly and that's that's what i think about it is is that we have a chance to talk about um so many things that that others feel maybe constrained by you know disciplinary boundaries or matters of taste like we don't care about that we don't care about taste in folklore studies yeah um it's wonderful and and i so i also get to i also love that i get to write like i often write for audiences outside of folklore mm -hmm. um and i get to just like i mean i just you know research whatever I want to research and and write about it I'm like lit scholars eat it up they're like oh this is so fascinating I'm like yes <laughs> yes, yes it is <laughs> um you so, could join our team if you wanted <laughs> you could <laughs> yes um, so we just we don't have quite the same we don't have quite the same we have different disciplinary rules than other kind of you know I'm also like I teach a lot of English courses and a lot of literature courses and our rules are different um and that's and that's great. Hell yeah! I I tell students sometimes that uh, folklore is really cool because you get to study all your hobbies. <laughs> it's like you yeah. can make a job out of your hobbies in exactly a way. Right. And, um, and you know, yeah. my fa like one of my favorite definitions of folklore is that it's fugitive knowledge. Um, that that we're always you know we're looking at things that that kind of move around that don't follow that that don't follow institutional law like they don't follow the rules. Yeah. Um, and that's that's what we get to, to mess around with every day so it's great yeah that's yeah we're thinking fugitive knowledge is such a cool way yeah. to think about folklore yeah. um mm -hmm. yeah i mean a past guest on our show said non-institutional discourses but i like mm -hmm. the idea that the fugitive knowledge kind of plays into the power dynamic that is it, it more more embedded mm -hmm. in that too which is really cool hell yeah and it's it, also <laughs> it's also much, so much more dramatic to say yeah, it is. yeah. It's it's uh, way cooler. It's like to sort of sprinkle a little, you know, just sprinkle a little pizzazz in there mm -hmm. to an already pizzazz full discipline. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is it is our. Um, yeah, I just love the idea of us like going around with hats and glasses and just like moving through the crevices of the academy. Um, <laughs> yes. I think it's great. The way that I mean, the way that folklore does. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hell yeah. Um, all right, I got another question for you. This is Go for it. 
How can the emergent knowledge generated from experiential learning opportunities in folklore mm. courses create disruptions to dominant cultural practices? Mm. It's kind of a big brain mm. question. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, one of the things that it's, so one of the things that's happening this semester in my, okay, I'm just guess I'm going to bring it out into the open into my ghost in my ghost hunting class. Right. Uh -huh. Um, is we are going on, we are going on site visits and we are talking with spirits and, and students are one, students 100% believe in what they're doing. Like, this is not, this is not a lark. This is not a LARP. <laughs> as, <laughs> um, um, you know, this is like, we are fully invested in kind of telling these stories, but what it's what it's done is kind of opened up a completely different way of knowing the world. It's like giving them a completely new epistemology, yeah. right? That, that they're thinking about history through the lit and they're thinking about kind of folk culture through the lens of, of what the, of what the spirits are telling them. Um, you know, that it is saying that this knowledge they, and they are taking this knowledge and treating it like any other type of knowledge. And that yeah. is just, I mean, that, that to me is what's been most kind of amazing about this is, you know, we like to talk a lot about, I love to talk about epistemology. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm a nerd about Let's that. Let's get into it. Um, I, <laughs> yeah. But, but this is, you know, you can say the word, you can write it on the board, you can define it, you can kind of point it out where it appears in text, but until you actually say, oh, I'm hearing the voice of someone who, um, you know, the young of a young person who lived here and that I'm getting that experience of here of, of kind of one of the, one of the spirits that my students interacted with was a, a young boy who 11 years old is, mm -hmm. is what he said. And he was, it, he was kind of stuck walking up and down the stairs. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's, that's how they, that's how they, Kind of got introduced to the history because they went and told our our um our host about this and she's like oh yes well this was a um at one point this building because this building's been a many different things um was i oh a kid for was a home for boys um and so this kind of so thinking about how seeing what it actually means to know things in a different way you can't replicate that through definitions, right? Right. Um, like somebody could tell you about the history of the place and you could be like, right. okay, cool. Got it. Right. But then mm -hmm. having it show up to you in a different order is dis yeah. is like disrupting the way that you make, uh, I don't know, deductions about what you are right. re environmentally receiving. <laughs> I'm using too many big then, words right now too, but like, yeah, like instead of doing it like inductively, you're doing it deductively or whatever, right. where you're like learning by what's th everything is telling you. And then you're going back to the research or to That's somebody. Right. So cool. Yeah. And it's, and it's not even that, it's not even just that either. It's just that the, you know, the research that you do is about physically interacting with the space. And it's yeah. about taking taking stories that you were learning somewhere outside of the history book, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 thinking about that story is just as valuable as, as anything else. Um, and yeah. and so as a way of kind of understanding all the ways all the ways in which we know the world and we know the space and we know where we live, it's just been it, it's been it's it's been incredible. That's incredible too. I. I don't know. This is sort of an off the cuff kind of thought that you're you're generating in me in my system, um, but the uh, the idea. Some people talk about experiential knowledge in a way that usurps other kinds of knowledge, mm -hmm. and I like the mm -hmm. way that you presented it as just why not have lots of different ways of knowing right. to paint the picture bigger. I feel mm -hmm. like that's kind of mm -hmm. the, something that you mm -hmm. were describing. Where I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I hear people say like. You need to experience to know it, or you need to, you know, you're not doing enough dedicated research and going high enough right. up in the, you know, like all of these are just different types of knowings right. that come with their right. own affordances and constraints. And I feel like that's right. That's so cool that you get to add 
multiple ways of knowing and talk about that in the classroom. And you can do that in folklore and you can't always in other disciplines. Okay. Especially, and it's especially unique for classes like you're in an English department. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, in a literature based class, you would think like, oh, narrative literature, you got to read the book. Well, no, <laughs> the, the, the author wrote about it who was a human being, a living person. I mean, maybe ghost memorate book. I would love to read that. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know we, we actually do start a novel cool. when we come back from spring break. That it's about a ghost hunting television show. But now they the students have not only been on these ghost hunts mm-hmm. and done this, but have been invited by people to actually kind of investigate a site. So yeah. so they're gonna have this perspective in reading this novel that they did not have if we would have read it at the beginning of the semester, right? Right. It's a yeah. completely different perspective. Yeah. But you're right. So you know, how cool. can we hire our guys knowledge? When it all depends on, like, it all depends on the same kind of way of gathering, interpreting, thinking about what it is that we, that we see or read or experience, right? Yeah. And, and hierarchizing it is just, the, it just kind of flies in the face of, of what knowledge actually is. Uh, somebody in the chat's asking what that book is, that novel about ghost hunting. <laughs> They're wondering if you know what um, it is off the top. I, I, I'm I so terrible with names. This is something that everyone needs to know about me. I'm <laughs> okay. absolutely terrible with names and titles and anything. And we start reading it um, next week. But I'll have to look it up. Um, we can circle back yeah. to that, too. They were just... Laura, drop it yeah. in the Discord. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll circle back to it for yeah, sure. Yeah, no worries. Um, hell yeah. Th- thank you for that. We were also thinking a little bit about other kinds of... Um, in this question, some of your work with maybe queer ghost lore or sort of how can the experiential knowledge that you Mm -hmm. bring to your classroom space disturb some other systemic Mm -hmm. issues or kind of complicate them or bring them to the forefront where other, where are often left behind or like not addressed? Um, Yeah, I think that because It embodies it in a way that we don't that we don't usually encounter in a literature classroom. Um, yeah. You know, the we are these are these are we are going to this site. We are interacting with the spaces, and we're doing it with our bodies. and And some of our bodies are queer, and some of our bodies are fat, and some of mm-hmm. our bodies are. Yeah. Um, are you know disabled Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of different ways that we're interacting with with the space and with the um with the the way we are kind of positioning ourselves as as thinkers i know that seems but it's like an actual do we sit in a circle do we stand up do we sit down Mm -hmm. you know do we um what is the best way to interact with like, what's the best way to interact with the spirit? So who's going to hold mm-hmm. the dowsing rod? Yeah. And all of that kind of embodied, um, th- you know, having to account for this, um, these different uh, interactions with the f- physical space will always disrupt how it is that we kind of interact with knowledge. Because, That's so true. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, whether or not you can... You know, I'm, I have I have a lot of time. I have a really hard time reading off a computer. It makes me sick. Um, and so I have a hard time now kind of, like, reading books. I know this sounds, this is a weird tangent. But, you know, thinking about how I can't, in our, because so much of our knowledge now is, you know, we don't have new books in the library. We just have e-books. We don't have hard, right? So everything I have to do, I have to read on the computer screen, which changes the way that I take that information and think about it. It makes, I have to read it in much smaller, much smaller pieces. I have to walk away and then come back. You know, it changes how I interact with that knowledge that I'm getting from whatever it is that I'm reading. So that same kind of, kind of embodied um, play is at work in say what my students are doing in this class. And, you know, and in the queer folklore, in the queer ghost lore project, um, and actually, Andrea Kita is going to to write a foreword for us. Um, fingers crossed. And you know, 
what Andrea says is, of course there are queer ghosts. Why aren't, you know, of course there are. If there are queer people, there are queer ghosts. Um, and thinking about ghosts then as not just a separate thing that exists, it's like as a category, right? You can have a ghost, but the ghost itself doesn't have any identity markers. Like that's not reflective of how we understand yeah. the past or how we understand spirits, mm -hmm. right? Ghost itself is not an it's not an identity. It's a part of an identity, yeah. but it's not the only identity. Um, so so thinking about how you know collapsing and like narrowing ghost to fit a very specific type of criteria is doing is is in a, is you know a kind of <laughs> um the same way that colonialists have written history right where yeah. we make it we we flatten it we flatten difference mm -hmm. and yeah. so thinking about something like queer ghost lore is going to fo force us to to kind of deal with how we say take something like a ghost as a unit of meaning and say but we can't just use a ghost as this one type of of meaning right i don't know if that answered your question in any way no but. i i think it did i mean it's much yeah the there's a lot going on there it makes me think about the ability to perceive um mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. different types of ghosts <laughs> so some yes, people sure. say like you know animal ghosts if ghosts are real there'd be animal ghosts well i'm sorry you don't see them <laughs> that's my kind of you know like you know if, if you know if, of course there are queer ghosts i'm sorry you don't see them <laughs> they yeah, don't want right. to talk to you mm -hmm. yeah that's so interesting yeah maybe that um, you know frames it, my yeah. students so i start every class and i've done this every for every ghost class i've taught um they do a campfire tale so every and when i first started teaching the ghost class i just thought people we're going to tell me their favorite ghost story, right? I just thought they were going to look it up and like yeah. goosebumps or whatever. But it's not what's happened at all. They all tell memories. They all tell either first or second, you wow, know, that's cool. hand experiences. And this has been going on for years. So cool. <laughs> um, so if I, if I go in, like if I started this, not really believing in ghosts, mm -hmm. but thinking about ghosts, you know, I was like, oh, they're fun and they're interesting academically and they're metaphorical and they're figurative yeah. and they're all those things still, but after I've had, you know, years of students telling me their experience with ghosts, I can't think of anything, but, but yes, this is, they want me to believe their stories. How can all of these students have seen ghosts and ghosts not be real? But the point of that was that I get at least two ghost animals every semester. Uh, uh, because, story about because of course you would, because course animals would. don't live as long as humans. And if you've ever mm -hmm. had a pet, you are, you are going to interact with them at some point, whether mm -hmm. it's dreaming or ghost-like or, you know, that's so cool. Yeah. I, we could talk for the a book long is time about ghost the invisible world. <laughs> Oh, the invisible. That's the book. Okay. Death that's Florist. The that's the, the book. World. The Invisible World. Is it? Do you? Nora Fussner is the author. Nora Fussner. F U S S N E R. Hell yeah. I'm on it. Hell yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Dom. Yeah. Um, awesome. All right. I could keep talking about queer ghost lore with you for it's a okay. long time, but um, we have other questions that I think are, are also super great to ask you too. So, um, what are some, in a different direction, <laughs> what are uh -huh. some do's and don'ts for collaborative projects? Mm, good question. Um, don't. Okay, so don't expect the people that you work with to be anything but what they are. And Ooh, it's important. That's a really right? good way to say it. Yeah, because I was like, of course, they're all like unique projects with unique uh -huh. people. Right. But <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. So, okay. Don't expect people to be something they are not. Okay. Not right. Yeah. And 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 I that sounds negative, but but when you work with someone, know what they know what they are, know what they mm -hmm. do, and then you can't get mad if people. And I don't get mad. <laughs> I don't want any of my collaborators to be well, like, "Oh, she's talking about how she could." No, I don't get mad at all. Well, because if because, you, you know, I know who I'm yeah. working with. Yeah, if you know yeah. who they are, you're like, right. well, it's not obviously not personal. Right. It's, it, it's not because you are like mad at me or right. it's just because that's <laughs> the kind of person you are you right. just don't answer emails whatever that's part of the um, thing whatever or you really like to answer emails. yeah or you write right. or you write that's um me. at at death loris write paragraph long emails that have lots of which i love by the way but that's yeah. just part of the, you know, um, um 
part of organizational uh, management, which is important. So yeah, you just know yeah. who your collaborators are. Yeah. Um, you have to, you do have to let go. You do have to let go of any preconceived notion about what the project should be because to be truly collaborative, it, you, it can't be your vision, right? It has to be the vision of, of the people who are working together. Um, and, and be willing to go down that tangent. Or if they come back and say, I had a really great idea, be willing to say, that sounds awesome. Even if it doesn't quite fit what your previous assumption was. Um, always, so Willow and I communicate through Fishman, like, like Oh, stickers, oh like the, the right? stickers, like on Facebook, business the Fishman yeah, stickers? <laughs> yeah, and so always have a thing. Like, have a thing that you can, um, as a way to kind of shorthand talk and a way to, um, you know, kind of work collaborative. So by the end of the project, I have one message thread that's just, like, talking back and forth in Business Fish. And I love it that. Makes total I love sense, that. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I just, I mean, I really, <laughs> I really have not had any problems we have not had any problems with collaborating because we all do partly because we're all doing stuff that we love. Um, and you just have to be easy, just like be easy to say, you know what? That sounds good to me. Right. And if you can be easy, um, I, I have a bit of a control issue. <laughs> um, and I wouldn't call it an issue, but I would say, you know, I have a fear of deadlines <laughs> um, even though I'm very behind right now. And thankfully, my collaborators just kind of like pat me on the head and, and are like, okay, Shelly, yeah. you, can, you can send that email or whatever. Um, you kind of have but, a, a learned behavioral response to be yeah. heightened by the increasing due date yeah. timeline. Yeah. Um, and I know if people, I know you hear things like don't collaborate with, with your friends, but that's just bullshit. Of course you should. Like, yeah. Why wouldn't I, you? I don't, yeah. yeah, I guess I've, I've always been confused at what the alternative was because right. at a certain point in <laughs> the collaboration. Collaborate with your enemy. <laughs> you collaborate with my enemy. <laughs> and if you're doing right there, you're friend by the end. That's yeah, what I was going to say. Right. Yeah, I was like, okay, exactly so right. then you become friend. Like, at what point are you, like, not friend to friend? Like, I don't, like, I don't know. Um, yeah, you eventually get to that point as long as you're collaborate, you know, as long as you're working well together. You complete mm -hmm. the project, you bond. That's just mm -hmm. part of working together. Proximity no, yeah, means a lot. Absolutely. I'm sorry, absolutely. we've wasted three years being friends and collaborators. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> we've wasted so much time. Nobody will ever be into this thing. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> anyway, um, I mean, why those do are really helpful. Start over and rebuild yeah. that that relationship. Like, why do you have to rebuild a, a collaborative relationship from scratch? Yeah, over over that's a good point. Yeah. Like. You have to go seek seek someone yeah. out to which is which is again that the paradigm of like I don't know thinking that your thing is good and then imposing it on others like if you you come together with it organically it's like okay well, right. why would we not do um, it like I don't need to tell everybody to collaborate with me like we just that's not that's not collaborating <laughs> that's, that's like, right yeah that's and, that's and then, but then also at the same time don't be afraid to you mm -hmm. know collaborate with people that you wouldn't have yeah before like. People who maybe you don't know as well, because we do have a tendency, it's not just in folklore, it's in all disciplines, but because we're so small, um, it kind of, you see it, you know, we definitely have a tendency to be a little cliquish sometimes, not in a bad way, just, you know, we're going to write with our friends because we've always written with our friends, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so don't be afraid to, um, to also say, hey, but this is an interesting project, let's do this together, right? So don't, so don't be afraid yeah. to kind of bring Invite more into the in. fold yeah 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 Invite that yeah i think folklorists especially are into that too absolutely also. so like if you and your friend have an idea you know why not bring in 10 more people and make it an edited volume i've seen a million right. of those <laughs> you know right. yeah and, totally and thankfully most of us because of our unique kind of disciplinary output and where we are we don't have to worry as much about, oh, I need to get a single authored, you know, essay in this premiere, you know, in this premiere journal in order to blah, blah, blah. It, we just don't have quite that same kind of, I don't know. Um, we're so small 
it's not that so, it's not as rigid. They're it's sort not, of and it's there not are, as competitive, right? Yeah, there are expectations Maybe. of academia that are imposed uh -huh. across all of us, but right. There's something about folklore at least allows for the opportunity to break them or to break and the rigidity, a, but and we have a built sometimes reason why. But, yeah. yeah, sometimes this is not always <laughs> yeah. the case, and the places people are at places that don't allow this, and mm -hmm. I totally mm -hmm. understand that. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we're also it's it, it's like inherent in the field that this is what we do. So yeah. if all else fails, you can make the collaborative process part of the research, right? Yeah, you can say this collaborative process is part of the research itself. right right yeah that's a great point and it actually kind of ties into our next question if okay. that's cool if i could jump into that sure. a little bit um so the sleuthing team we read your uh -huh. five times i was not a folklorist and one time i was which is a wonderful yes. wonderful article um very fun read and uh we liked it a lot so we were wondering in what ways you were an agent of the folklore revolution because that's what it kind of spoke to us thinking about like how do we summarize something in that and so yeah how are you the an agent of the folklore revolution i i don't even know how to begin next to that <laughs> um, chat's going wild for this one yeah <laughs> chat's, chat's been going wild for all your ideas. yeah true true <laughs> um i mean oh can we all be can we be revolutionaries can we stage the folklore revolution um, and yeah, and part of the reason I do it is I've gotten to the point in my career where I'm just like, I don't care. It's like, I'm going to do this thing and I'm going to say what I want to say and I'm just going to do it. Right. And I, the number one thing that's helped me, and this is going to be tough because I don't know how people will react to it. Cause I, cause I understand it's this, but the idea of this is, and I know we, we say we don't think oh this is i know we give lip service to saying oh we don't say this is real folklore this is not real folklore this is this is, these are real folklorists these are not real folklorists but when we actually get, put it into action we still make fun of joseph campbell right oh yeah like, <laughs> like we do and w with good reason um no we, yeah um and and we still make fun of the people who think of joseph campbell as the number one folklorist of all time right yeah and, and that's kind of like, to be a revolutionary, we have to invite those people into the fold and then say, you know, there are um, many other ways. If you like Joseph Campbell, guess what we got? Like, check this out. Um, and I think that we can just, you know, kind of, we have spent so much time and effort defining the field because of, because we, of the way that we're treated by other academic disciplines at large, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have to spend time doing that because otherwise we're not going to get another hire in folklore ever at any university, right? Mm -hmm. But on the same time, at the same time, like my, I say this in this article, you know, I was teaching a class, a graduate seminar, and one of the students in the class says, y'all do spend a whole lot of time um, debating who is and who who does and who doesn't get to be a folklorist and it was kind of really eye-opening for me right it's like we sure do that so let's stop doing that yeah um and i think that's one way to be an agent of of a revolution that doesn't mean that we throw our methodologies out mm -hmm. the window um you know that doesn't mean we throw mm -hmm. our our ideas up that's not what that means at all it's just it's just saying if we are, let's put our money, the money, our money where our mouth is. If we are folklorists and we are all the folk, then, then that means, you know, yeah. bless their poor Joseph Campbell loving heart, right? <laughs> sure. Like, yeah. it's just, it is what it is. So, um, you inspired me to think of an epistemological comparison. <laughs> like circling back, circling back yeah, to back. your, <laughs> we back to dream brain, everybody. Um, you were making me think about how sometimes when I've done research with, like, cryptids and people in particular mm -hmm. who still believe that Tasmanian tigers are out there in the mm -hmm. wild in Tasmania and they're uh -huh. not, and they're not extinct, right. everybody, everybody always asks me, like, okay, well, are they or aren't they real? And I'm like, right. that question's right. not that interesting to me. That's right. <laughs> What's mm -hmm. interesting is the fact that people are still talking about them. So it's mm -hmm. a similar thing where it's like, are you or are you not a folklorist? Like, that's not that interesting of a question. Like, what's an interesting right. question is what we 
create and produce and share with the That's world, right. classrooms, collaborators, what partners, whatever. You know, so I think yeah, that exactly made, right. made a lot of sense. Um the way the that you put that there. Pecker, in my neck of the woods. It's definitely yeah. the ivory build woodpecker. Oh, oh yeah, um, yeah, totally. Oh, which also out there. Just uh-huh. gonna put that on <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just give it that. No, there's some actually some really great like bir- cryptid birds in the United States, which is really fun. I know it's a whole there other are. whole other line of inquiry. But yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's like it's that's not the interesting question to me. I mean, right. for some people, for some for some like biologists or for people from these different sure. epistemological groundings and research, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. is an important question. But for mm-hmm. folklorists, it's not as interesting. <laughs> What's interesting and, you know, is that the people just, talk about it. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And we should be like, oh, that's great. Tell me about it. Right. Yeah. Like, like, tell me about your video game. But you know what? I see. I did. We did. I did kind of come of age in folklore studies when we were debating whether or not we could talk about online folklore as yeah. folklore. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are still people who say, no, we can't. Um, that's not real. That's not real folklore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but but the way that it's actually being done, like the way that y'all are practicing folklore now, it's like that train, that horse. Wait, I was mixing metaphors. That train has left the barn. Um, that train has totally left the barn. <laughs> the train is stations at the barn and also it leaves at, the barn. <laughs> yes, at, at the same time. There was, yeah. a tra- there was a train in that barn. <laughs> <laughs> it was a carriage. <laughs> wagon okay. <laughs> uh, that makes a lot of sense there there's maybe a, a question in the chat that perhaps you and i maybe together or all of us could weigh in on. Oh, I, I don't necessarily want to okay. put the spotlight on you if you don't want to delve mm-hmm. into this but one of the questions for just a person who's um, not familiar with who joseph campbell oh. is I'm um, sorry. We get, no, no very, you're very important, you're very fine important that we're doing academic outreach to the gamers no it's no seriously though like this is actually an important question like who is this person so yeah. the way i usually describe joseph campbell is if you go to the library or to a used bookstore and you go mm-hmm. to the folklore section mm-hmm. you're gonna get a lot of texts by this guy named joseph campbell usually the book is a hero with a thousand faces but basically he's um I don't know, a mid-20th century guy who did a very big uh, international study of myth and symbols and tried to create a universalizing archetype for what it means to be human and to have these symbols and whatever. So it, he's like a mythology guy, but he kind of, you know, there's lots of controversy about both who he was as an individual, but also about how his academic work was conducted. And it's a very, like, mm-hmm. pop pop folklore kind of book that's usually how i describe it. i don't know shelly would you add the on that or journey. The, hero's journey. the hero's journey yes it right. anytime oh. somebody talks about yeah the cycle of heroes whether it's star wars right. to I was, I was, myth the only I don't know. Fact of that daisy yeah. was george lucas and pbs yeah george lucas yeah. and pbs his two big cosigns <laughs> yeah, yeah yes yes um definitely so yeah okay oh yeah they're yeah, in the chat guy, like that, that guy. guy yeah yeah so I mean, not not an in, a deeply influential person, but folklorists like to give him flack because we don't like his methods. Oh, he's and his, awful. He's a bad. He's not, yeah, he's like kind of he's a shitty guy. Yeah. It's okay. He's yeah. not he here anymore. Bad, he had some very bad takes. <laughs> yeah, he had some. Bad. He had some really not cool takes. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. And yet, right? If you talk about the hero's journey and an introduction to folklore class. Mm. It lets students think about narrative in a way they've never thought about it before mm-hmm. if they don't know of Hero's Journey, right? Mm-hmm. And yep. and, um, and it lets them engage with the text in a way that they may have not, uh, like, any kind of text in a way they not have done before. Yeah. So we have to say, here's why he's awful. Yeah. Here are the awful things. But look at all these other formalists who were doing similar things, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Or, yep, yep. Um, you know, and, and ways to supplement or complement. Mm-hmm. And then uh, hopefully they'll come to their own conclusions mm-hmm. about uh about Luomi in the chat put a good a good summarization, which is context doesn't matter and all cultures are the that's same. Right. There you go. That's that's exactly that's, right. Joseph, that's what Joseph Campbell says. <laughs> and that's so. not just all cultures are the same, but all cultures are, you know, King like King Arthur. Yeah. Um, white yeah. Christian, male, yeah, you know, cis hat, whatever, yeah. all of that. That's mm-hmm. what that's yeah. what we are. There's only one kind of protagonist, and right. uh, it's never a lady, <laughs> yeah, and it, it can't be, be yeah. it, it kind of can't be a woman <laughs> or anything that, or any right. other, you know, yeah. configuration of gender, you know. Joseph yeah. Campbell, and but Chad <laughs> is saying Joseph Campbell's wife was a very interesting 
uh, woman. <laughs> I, she really was. I pretty much universally agree to be to be cheeky about universalisms. Uh, that well, all of the wives of these guys were way cooler. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I not I sorry. Spent, I can't believe I just spent 15 minutes talking about Jesse Campbell in this. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. No, no. Doing outreach to the gamers. No, this is like this is like totally cool. Um, not a, not a problem at all. Um, mm -hmm. all right. So I have some funzy questions for you. Are you are, okay? Dom maybe wants to ask well, at least one or two of these. Dom, oh, you want to ask the, the first, first one? one okay. All right. Yes. Go for it. All right, Shelly. Why mm -hmm. is Tommy the best member of the Soggy Bottom Boys? <laughs> I have no idea why Tommy is the best member of the Soggy Bottom Boys. I don't know the answer to that question. What? Who is? Which one is Tommy? Oh he's my God! The, he's he's the uh 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 filler filler so who plays the guitar. He's, he's the, the guitar uh, guy. He's the, the guy the, who puts the, the yeah yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. The lone, the lone uh, African American member yeah. okay. of the Bluegrass okay. band. Yes. I got it. That's that's why he's awesome. Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That that's probably related to my thesis, which I have not read. And <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Well, I we don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I mean, we Maybe had to. That's a question for a sleuth. <laughs> <laughs> we had to bring it up also coincidentally because Dom and I watched um, Oh Brother Where Art Thou on a podcast at one point, and we just both yeah. love we love that movie too, and wanted an opportunity to gush with you about how great. Yes, <laughs> good I, was, I mean it is great. <laughs> like it was revolutionary for me. Yeah, I mean it's why I'm a folklorist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Story, probably yeah. same. Yeah, right. It's that um, said George Lucas documentary about Joseph Campbell. <laughs> Two things I watched as a teen. <laughs> I mean, yes, it's, it's like I took a folklore class because I had loved it and I loved the music and everything. And so it was Carolyn Ware's class, and we were watching mm. a video, and like, and it was like a, I don't know, but there was a talking head, and I think it was Elliot Oring, and underneath it it said folklorist, and I was like, holy shit, you can do that! Like that's a job. <laughs> I didn't know that was a job. Yeah. So it really, and that's, that's why I did it. I'm like, that's a job. I'm doing this. Right. Because so it was, cool. I can yeah. talk about folk music um, and get paid to do it. Like and, in college where yeah. I, which I never wanted to leave. Yeah. I was, it's amazing. Yeah. And I mean, and pop culture and yes. fan and like all, all of, all it, of yeah, that for sure. Right. You can do all of it. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I got another question for you. What's your favorite regional weather lore you grew up with? <laughs> That I grew up with. Um, I think all the time about uh, the persimmon seeds. We had a persimmon tree oh. that was right next to our front door for a long time. And when they fell, the guts got everywhere. Everywhere. They're and, so messy. Right? They're so messy unless you just like right. process them immediately. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it's just like, and so thinking about the spoon or the, or the knife, right, was, was one of my favorites. But Another one of my favorite. Wait, wait, um, I have to. Wait, I have to. Thinking about the knife of the persimmon. I don't know this one. <laughs> so oh, it's like, oh, the what seed. is this? Like you break, you break open the seed. Um, okay. And it's either a spoon or a fork, right? Or a spoon or. A oh, knife. the shape of the seed is either. The shape a, of the, okay, like, okay. Inside, you'll, you'll uh, that see makes it. sense. And that predicts that predicts the severity of the winter. Right? Oh, okay, okay, that makes um, sense. Yeah. Uh, I grew up in Southern know, California. All, everything around oh, me yeah. was like avocados and citrus. Yeah. <laughs> I, yes. I know persimmons are close, but not quite. <laughs> yes. um, you know, and we also, of course, had so many stories about. So we had so many stories about hurricanes. So I grew up with with stories about um, about Hurricane Camille, and and so <laughs> so you know I always heard about the eye of the storm because the eye of Camille passed right over my parents' house. Oh. And okay. and a and a tree well and <laughs> and a tree fell on their house and it hit a table and my aunt was hiding underneath it and she was fine. <laughs> but, you know, thinking about how um, a storm moves, like I knew that if my, my grandparents' house went through the eye of Camille so they never left for any storm ever after that because we went through the eye of, of Camille. We're fine. Interesting. Right? Like, there's, yeah. There's there's no like we're fine. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Whatever. Um, <laughs> very predictable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Very predictable. Um, <laughs> but we had lots of lore about animals and what they did. And um, one of my new favorites is looking for the sky because the sky turns all of these vivid shades of purple and orange. Like, mm. the day before a hurricane comes. 
So oh, you get this yeah. beautiful kind of tropical sunset. Wow. Just, and then, but that's because, you know, there's a storm coming. Yeah. That, I, that's funny. I always think about if I, if it's like warm outside, like, uh-huh. but it's in a particular season, I'm like, okay, well, yeah. that's because the temperature's going up so it can make the, va- whatever the, mm. whatever the vortex above is because it's going to downpour <laughs> in like 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hell Yeah. Um, all right. We have, a, I have another question for you and I think Dom helped take the last one. Sound good? Okay. Okay. Sounds good. One of our sleuths. If mm-hmm. this information is shareable, if you would like to share it or are able to share it, okay. would like to know a little bit about the Ireland study abroad itinerary? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. <laughs> I, I pretend, like I, I think I said, I, I kind of pretend to know Irish folklore so that I can do... Um, and I a study abroad in Ireland. So it was really a crash course for me. Yeah. But yeah, so we're going to spend two weeks. So last, I can talk about what we did last time. Yeah. We spent two weeks in Cork and a week in Dublin. But um, in Cork, we go to, fr- we go to this uh, Mizzen Head, right? So we take a long excursion through Mizzen Head where we end up on the cliffs and it's all very dramatic. Um, and we also did a Ring of Kerry tour to see all the, and it, we were supposed to stop at a, in a folk village is what they called it. We are not taking that tour this time. We are not <laughs> we are not going to the folk village this time. Fair. Because it was everything that you can it was it was both more than you can imagine and, and completely less. Uh, like if it was gonna be you know like if it was going to be, you know, bad, I wanted it to be really bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um and then we're gonna do things like uh, go to to Cove, which is on the south coast, which was the last port of call for the Titanic. Oh, wow. um, so that's that was the last place that, you know, that's the last piece of land that, that folks on the Titanic saw. So there's a lot, you know, so we're going to talk a lot about Titanic lore um, when we're there and, and the weather, of course. Um, we are not going to the Blarney Stone this summer, but we did go last summer. And yes, almost everyone kissed the Blarney Stone. Amazing. But it's like... But it's like this real, you have to climb up these stairs and it takes forever. And oh, then, oh my I don't gosh. know if you've ever seen it, but you have to like turn yourself upside down. It's, yeah. it's wild. I didn't know. Um, I didn't know that you have to turn yourself upside down to, to yeah. perform the kiss. Yeah. yeah okay. Right. Yeah. Your, your mouth I've on seen it, yeah. it, but I yeah. haven't seen. Yeah. I guess I haven't thought about that part. Um, <laughs> that sounds complicated. This year, <laughs> yeah. This year we're going to go to um, Newgrange, which is a Neolithic site that I didn't go. We didn't go to last year. Uh, I personally got to see some uh, standing stones and that was, there were standing stones and then it was like right out over the ocean and there was nothing but like, it was incredible. That's um, awesome. But we get to go to New Grange, nice. which is, which is a Neolithic site. So that's going to be a lot yeah. of fun. Nice. See, see our Toke Thompson episode yeah, for true. a <laughs> ranking of Neolithic sites. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, that all sounds amazing. Um, I, so I'm not a food waste person, so I'm going to hand this over to the food waste guy. Okay. Oh. All right. All right. So people want to know, the people need to know, what are the essentials for a crawfish boil? Oh, wow. Okay. Crawfish. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, seasoning. If you think it's, if you think it's enough seasoning, it's not enough. So you need Boom. way more, right? Um, like you need way more than what you think you need. And then you probably need a little bit more than that. <laughs> Good um, to know. Yeah, so we we tend to just use a crab oil and then you put in a bunch of sacheries in it and then you add a bunch of other stuff. So what's the other stuff? You have to have potatoes. You have okay. to have like red potatoes in there. Um, you have to have onion and garlic. You have to have- Corn? Uh, we like corn, yes. You put Ooh, like corn, cor- like, yeah, okay. like little corn on the cob. It's delicious. Um, when it comes out, uh, my family likes to put mushrooms um, in it. I hate mushrooms, but I let them do it. I don't go <laughs> it. It's fine. Um, and yeah, and that's pretty much what we put. But people put all kinds of stuff. A lot of people put eggs, like they boil mm-hmm. eggs and they like, put it in there. Did they put the they put the hard boiled egg in? Well, they just, yeah, and then it they just put the egg in it. Like and oh, it and then because you're all you're boiled. cracking everything yeah. anyway. Okay, yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then there's a new thing that people are putting ravioli. I just, I just. What? What? Yeah, that apparently now people are putting ravioli sometimes in their crawfish boils. 
Um, I mean, think about it. It sounds delicious when it's, it comes out. I mean, it, yeah. it's, you gotta boil them anyway. You might as well make them right? all seasony. <laughs> you know? That's you might right. as well just, like, put all that, put um, all that nice, juicy, like... Yeah, but yeah, it makes something sense. Something that, that people might not know about and is the potato salad. Do you know about the potato salad? No, 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 uh, that's gumbo. Never mind. Um... Usually, this question is about gumbo. I'm always talking about gumbo. Oh, um, well, gum- okay. Well, that but that's interesting that you put potato salad in gumbo as a se- yeah. separate dish. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. So oh, that's yeah. so that's the, the kind of and beer. You have to have beer. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. that, obviously. So those are kind of the essentials. Hell yeah. Onion, garlic. What about like that viral TikTok crawfish oh, boil yeah. that had Sunny D in it? Um, people do that. Like I think. All it- kinds of- I feel like Sunny D's the vibe because it's like yeah. it's got the sugar and the citrus yeah. already. It's it like, only comes yeah. in large quantities. Yeah, you can, yeah. Like, yeah, you can only get, get like yeah, yeah, you can only get gallons um, enough. Yeah, <laughs> and I sometimes we'll throw some oranges. Oh, and sausage. I forgot sausage. Oh, the yeah. sausage. Oh, like, yeah, the sausage. But sometimes we throw oranges in there if we have oranges, right? Yeah. So why not Sunny D? I know people will be like, "That's not real growth," but whatever. It's it's the people. It's what they do. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's part of that's part of the the maintenance and and changing of the tradition, right? You gotta have that's some exactly arguments right. to like see what stays that's and exactly what right. goes. Yeah, it makes sense. Now, Sunny D and Ravioli at the same time. Now that <laughs> that does <laughs> seem a little. Yeah, that does seem a little. You're branching into different different uh, regional variants mm-hmm. or something. You can't bring them all together. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, that's the yeah. formal end of our questions, but we do have a game to play, and I'm going right. to cue that up really quick. Um, Dom, okay. why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce that to Shelly? All right, <laughs> Shelly, here's the question. Oh, no. Have, have you ever made a tier list before? I have not. Uh, All right. Tier lists for you or anyone else watching this who might not be familiar... Uh, come from fighting games as a way to rank character choice, but people on the internet, especially Twitch, love to use them just to rank uh, shit in everyday life, which is also why I argue folklorists ought to love them. Uh, I was going to say, Daisy, where to go? I was going to say, okay, hit watch stream if you haven't. Okay, yeah, it was loading for a sec, that's why. We have a special tier list that you are uniquely (laughs) equipped to handle, and that is... As you can see on uh, 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 on the screen share that Daisy has has shared, Louisiana gas station food. <laughs> yes, I'm no. still waiting for this to see the screen. There we go. Is it there, there we go. Cool. That is it. <laughs> before yes. we get before we get started, what can you tell people about Louisiana gas station food? Uh, is that Louisiana gas station food is incredible. It's meat and threes. It's plate lunches it's like real food and it's also lots of fried stuff and and you know i we do have the gas station book that will be coming out hopefully within a year yeah um, and, nice and it's, and it's kind of so incredible and it's just like you don't have to have a restaurant to sell your food at a gas station and so it really allows someone's <laughs> mama or me yeah. like someone's cajun me can cook the you know the gumbo and sell it at the gas station and it's really pretty it's really pretty incredible so good so good oh yes okay so this is a special contribution from uh guest uh guest sleuth uh zach my ga (laughs) who is from a cajun enclave in north louisiana so it might be a little it might be a little wonky uh, it's okay, however, I'm, I'm originally he, from Mississippi, so okay. it's all gonna. It, okay, it's all gonna okay. Out. He he swears by his picks, so thank you, guest uh, guest <laughs> thank sleuth. Thank you, guest sleuth, um, Zach. <laughs> and uh, however, we should say the ranking system here goes on a scale from S to D. S is a grade is our grades a hundred and one percent and up, and then D is uh, nest, nestling up to failure. We can make an F tier if you really hate something. <laughs> We can make a we can make an S plus tier. We can make S if plus. Something yeah. is one hundred and ten percent or higher. So yeah. yeah, as Daisy like to say, S is superior. D is dumpster. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, we'll rank everything vertically and horizontally. So the top left is your number one spot. Top left is number one. Yep. Okay. Okay. I don't know my left from my right, so I'm gonna. We can that, we I'll can ask you. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Right. That's cool. Yeah. Do do you want me to just go down the line as they're as they're ranked yes. here on uh, on this okay. list? Yes. Okay. Okay. Sometimes number one. Number one are boudin balls. 
I mean, for me, those are number one. I mean, those All are right. Top of S. Top of S. Describe boudin for people in chat. What is that? I don't know. Uh, it's a sausage-like thing made of meat-like stuff and rice and seasonings. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. D- Daisy, use your Ohio brain. It's okay. ghetto with rice. But oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. Uh, boudin balls. Boudin and- balls are, are boudin that's been shaped into a ball and fried. Yeah. Sure, sure. Daisy's already grabbed that next one, and those are potato logs. You know, I'm going to put that in. The people love their potato logs, but they just don't do it for me. They're, you can get po- potato logs anywhere. Just call them yeah. something else. You can get yeah. them everywhere. That makes, yeah. I'm, no, I'm with you. Bit, these are like a quarter of a potato. They are. Well, yeah. that's true. Of a potato. <laughs> Extra potato. Yeah. This next one here, that might be special guest sleuth's uh, uh, specialty because that is a Natchitoches meat pie. Ooh. Oh, man. Yeah, that's S tier. Yeah, is it S tier below boudin balls? I think it's it's above boudin balls. Hell yeah. Wow. You're number one already (laughs) dethroned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. Uh, But I swear those are my top two. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, Coming up up next, this next one that Daisy's... The guy, yeah. these are <laughs> these are pronto pups. What are they? Pronto pups. I I what was are... told they are they are corn dogs, but yeah. flour instead of corn, and you're gonna know okay. what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know what that means. <laughs> I can taste that though. I love yeah, the idea. Let's, let's, I mean, let's give it an A because you know. Yeah, let's try it. Let's do Meat that. Meat on a stick. Meat on a stick. Meat on a covered stick. in covered in a, a sort of flour type substance. Yeah. 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 All uh, right. The the next one that Daisy's uh-huh. got know, is soon. catfish. That's gonna really depend on the place. If it's mm. if I'm in Mississippi, mm. that's a S tier. Mm. Um, I'm less sure. I, but if you're at a why not in Louisiana? Yeah, I'm a little less sure. Let's do this a uh, uh, a yeah okay. an a. a a above pronto pop. No, no, let's do below. Okay, okay. Let's, okay. Let's, no. Bottom of a, bottom of a. It's an A yeah. minus. Got yeah. it. Got it. Uh, this next one was when I when I asked when I asked uh, Zach uh, ga- Louisiana gas station food. This uh-huh. was the first thing he said, okay. and it's a cris- and it's a crispito. A crispito. I mean, they're going to be, let's be, it's a B. They're going to be good, and they're going to be good no matter where you are, but they're not S tier. Is is, uh, is is chicken and cheese the archetypical Crispito? I, yes. Yep. Got it. Yep. Um, yep. And next after that are, are gas station egg rolls. If it's from the Dodge store, but I don't... <laughs> It has I to be mean, a specific again, gas station. <laughs> I mean, again, it depends. There's a gas station in Mississippi that makes the best egg rolls I've ever had. They're so good. Um, let's let's put that sentence. Let's put it above. Let's put it first line A. The right That's here. Okay, top, yeah, All right. Top a right nice, there. Okay. nice, yeah, nice. Under boudin, under boudin balls. <laughs> nice. Under boudin balls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, next up, this one just made me crack up. The longer he described it, fried <laughs> shish kebabs. <laughs> as someone, as someone who grew up in in in, in Toledo, Ohio, with one of yeah. the most he- like densest Lebanese populations, yeah. uh-huh. I could yeah. not understand Look, this. It's just if if you have a fryer, you, <laughs> you make it. Yeah, you it's like you see it. It's already food. there. Got it. <laughs> I mean, it's what it is. It's um, on a stick. Yeah. I mean, because. Because ch- because chicken on a stick has my heart rather than than the fried uh, shish kebabs. Let's put this above the crispito, but on B. Okay, top of B. Top of B. All right, excellent, excellent choice. We're, we're hitting the home stretch, and I think we got three right. iconic ones. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, here we go. Next up is andouille. Um. Yeah. This is this is S tier, but I for me it's. Mm, it's for mm. you, for you. You know, you for don't you. need to. For yeah, me, for me, it's gonna be below boudin balls. All right, yeah. below boudin balls, solidly S tier, but the bottom of yes. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Uh, nice. Next are 
chicken tenders that have been sitting under the heat lamp in a, <laughs> in a pyramid. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I'm going to have to put that as a B because sometimes you just want, but because sometimes I would put it above chicken logs. Okay. Sometimes you just want chicken tenders that have been sitting under a heat lamp. In a yeah. So is, that, is that the top of B? That's like the, no, I think right there is good. Okay. No. Like, okay. It's cool that chicken, the chicken became your B tier there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> it did. I guess that, yeah. Yeah. Good. I like that. And, and I last but not good. least, are for reals. I don't know what for reals are. The ice cream uh, dispenser. Oh, I don't like ice cream. So, Ooh. Going... yeah, so that's going with the. That's why I don't know what they are. So, but I'm yeah, not like, gonna... the, like the soda fountain for ice cream. That, yeah. that I looked up and is a thing over there. <laughs> that's I mean, cool. I, I believe you. I just see the meat pies and like forget the <laughs> yeah. <ice cream. laughs> Hell yeah. Um. So let's put that with yeah. That goes below. Yeah, potato logs. Is that? I mean, that do you want it on C or do you want it on D? Let's if you don't, D. if you let's don't see. like ice yeah. cream, yeah. 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 No, that's a beautiful. That's a beautiful piece yeah. shape. Wow. Look at this. Yeah. Look yeah. at that beautiful tail. Yes, wonderful, nice. <laughs> wonderful. Excellent. Wow, well, this is this is an excellent Chad, list have, here. You have your work cut out for you. You got to get some meat pies. Um, I know. I'm like, how are we gonna wrap this up? I mean, well, I guess we know how to wrap it up. What has <laughs> from most to least meat? <laughs> how do you like your gas station food? That's <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> And I love potatoes. Like potatoes yeah, but are, anyway. they're not D. They're pretty. They're yeah. standard. You know. And like, I think it's potatoes. because it's what makes like this is what makes yeah gas station food mm -hmm. right yeah for mm -hmm. sure that is what makes gas station food hell yeah. Wow, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put our larger faces back on the screen here just to thank you for that <laughs> wonderful interview. I feel like we learned a lot. This is like really oh. fun energy to hang out with. Like, this is just fun. I feel like we created some fun energy tonight. Um, and most of that I'm is glad. like, most of that is thanks to, to you and your knowledge and your love for folklore and, um, also your love for gas station foods. So, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, um. hell yeah, it's, um, you know, buy, buy and invest in, in Shelly's collaborative texts that are available. <laughs> wait five post minutes, weather chat. lore. We'll post them in the chat. Um, yeah, wait five minutes on weather lore and then uh, absence and folklore studies, which has been one of, or uh, absence and folklore studies, implied nowhere, which has been one of my favorite, right. um, my favorite books. And uh, hey, everybody, check out Shelly doing cool Shelly stuff. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I, you know, the, it, the time has flown. And yeah, it really been, has. It's yeah. kind of fun. Um, awesome. And I appreciate it. And I appreciate what y'all do. Yeah. Um, and yes, and thank you for doing what you're doing. <laughs> Thanks Absolutely. for being part of the folklore revolution. <laughs> chat, before Shelly leaves, yeah, let's before go. Shelly leaves yeah. chat, please post some ladders in chat yes, for yes. our wonderful guests. Um, <laughs> if you don't have ladders yet, do GGs um, because that's but this I saw is the our subs chat flying folklore. Around. I saw yeah. the subscriptions flying around. Subscriptions, you, yeah. all, you all ought to have. Uh, <laughs> Some ladders right there. Yeah, this is our like as our chat folklore for like cheering for you. Um, we say oh, it. We say so everything is ladders. It's a giant so ladder for you. Yeah, yeah we built. See, we're building ladders. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. Anyway. <laughs> oh, it's both funny and like it's so sweet. It's, like, <laughs> yeah. Earnest. Yeah. The earnestness. I love yeah. It. Yeah. Um, um, awesome. Right. So this is your natural well, out. Domino, probably gonna yep. switch back over to play some Red Dead. But yep. uh, have a great rest of your night. And, uh, thank y'all so much. Thank wonderful. you so much for coming yeah, on. Yeah, maybe hang out in the background or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, bye y'all. <laughs> <laughs>